Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Tome of Beasts and the Creature Codex. Uh, these are 5th edition compatible third party books put out by Kobold Press. And these are specifically, as you can see right here on the covers, these are going to be the pocket editions. Now I'm not going to go through every single page in both books because these are two 400 page books. And that would just be a lot of flipping and I there's certain things that I want to point out or focus on, uh, but more or less, I just want to raise awareness that these pocket edition books are out there, that they're available, and I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, pocket editions um, sort of at the end of the video. So let's start with the Tome of Beasts. This one uh, has been out longer than the Creature Codex. I think the Creature Codex uh, pocket edition is a relatively new release, like within the last month or so. Uh, but this one I've actually had for a little while. I picked it up, I want to say pre-pandemic, but I don't recall ever actually doing a video on it. Uh, I think I was going to, but it just a lot of stuff was going on around that time. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it here. So, uh, this, you know, very nice cover. Uh, we got the pocket edition there, the list of authors that worked on it. And then on the back, we have a horde of new fifth edition monsters. Uh, gives you some of the highlights in here, including clockwork creatures, drakes and dragons, devils and arch devils, uh, dangerous flavors of the fae. Uh, undead and much more. Uh, the retail price for this was $21.99 US. Uh, in Canada, I bought this at a local, or not a local game store. This one I actually ended up picking up through a book chain, and I want to say that I only paid, I think I paid around $30 for it, $29.99 or $26, $7 or $8.99 for it, uh, but definitely a good price. Now, this is about a 400 page book. And Cobalt Press also put out, I see many, several references in here to a Midgard setting. So I think they, they put out their own campaign setting uh, a while back. So this is a book that sort of supplements or complements that one uh, very well. But you can use it for just your standard uh, Dungeons Dragons 5th edition games. Uh, now in this book, there's a lot of sort of newer, sort of unique creatures in here. Uh, a lot of which have very interesting names that I'm not really going to try uh, uh, to pronounce here because it's just not going to go well. But there's some cool stuff like, I love the Bone Collective. I mean, anything undead in general, uh, I'm going to be a fan of. Here we have the Bone Swarm. So that's a pretty cool uh, looking creature. A large swarm of tiny undead. So yeah, again, there's a lot of really interesting and cool stuff in here. Uh, so... I, I always love getting like new monster books and seeing some of the things that they create. So here's some of the, the clockwork creatures, clockwork hound, huntsman, the clockwork um, myrmidon, which was used to be, I think, a level title for the fighters, fifth edition, or not fifth edition, uh, the D&D &D fighters in previous editions, like uh, OD&D and AD&D, &D, stuff like that, back when the different levels had like unique names to them. And so here's an example, again, if, you know, you want to use the Midgard campaign setting. So this gives you like just a little blurb on how to use them specifically in that setting. Uh, but the book is written from sort of a standard or generic uh, point of, uh, or frame of mind, I guess you could say. Uh, again, cool stuff here. We got some deep ones, which I'm always going to be a fan of. Uh, the deep one. Oh, <laughs> Arch, Archmandrite. I, I, I butchered that. It's like one o'clock or one thirty in the morning when I'm recording this, and um, it, the last week or so has been very difficult to get a good night's sleep. So I hope I hope that this video is at least somewhat comprehensible. Um, if it's not, I apologize, but that's just uh, sorry, sort of what you know what's going on. Okay, so we got some arch devils in here, and again, I believe these are all unique ones. So again, just some cool stuff to have. New Devils, Gilded Devil, Lunar Devil, some Dinosaurs. Oh, and here we have some new dragons. So we have a Cave Dragon. So this is sort of a subterranean dragon. Uh, focuses more on being able to climb and just like on land movement. But it does have a, uh, at higher, at higher um, age categories, it does have a fly speed. So this is like the, this is the adult one here. And then we have the young and the wormling. Does it not have the ancient? I guess it doesn't have an ancient one. Interesting. Adult. Yeah, adult, young, and uh, wormling. Oh, 
Either way. Uh, so here we have the Ancient Flame Dragon. That's a pretty cool looking one. Sort of looks like the Magma Dragon, uh, the Pyroclastic Dragon from 3rd Edition. But pretty cool look to it there. And that one has all four age categories there. And then we have the Mithril Dragon. So, and then the Sea Dragon. And then we have the Void Dragon. That one actually looks pretty cool. I like, I like the artwork on that one. That one, again, also looks really, really nice. And then the Wind Dragon. Different artworks, too, for some of the different age categories, which is great. And then we have some different drakes here, including the uh, the Ale House Drake. Just love that one. Uh, Ash Drake. So, again, just a lot of cool stuff in here. And, uh, yeah, you just, again, it's, it's always nice to have a new um, collection, assortment of monsters to use. If you've got players that have been playing for a long time, they may have seen it all. This uh, gives you some new options to sort of throw at people. Some fake creatures here, Snow Queen. Again, some really, really cool stuff in here. Some different types of ghouls. So the Bone Powder Ghoul. The Daharkul Ghoul. And then the Emperor Ghoul. This one is actually really cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge level 20 ghoul. Um, now, again, challenge ratings in 5th edition are kind of wonky at best. But this is still a high-level creature to, to use as like a villain for a campaign. Uh, so I would, I, would, I would design, I would love to design um, a series of adventures or a campaign based around having this like Emperor Ghoul that the players ultimately go up against. So and some cool stuff there. Then we have the Imperial Ghoul. And some new giants. So again, it's a lot of really cool stuff in here. And some really nice artwork as well. So, you know, they always do a decent job, I think, you know, a lot of these companies with the artwork for their creatures. And, yeah, this one, like I said, just pretty much every everything in here, I think, looks really well, you know, like, really well drawn, really cool looking. Uh, and when it comes to a monster book, it's always nice to have, like, this guy's awesome, the Shadow Beast. Um, is that the Shadow Beast or the Shadow Bar? No, that's the Shadow Beast, okay. Um... Yeah, it's just really, oh, it's always nice to have really cool artwork. The, the shark jaw skeleton looks really cool. Different snakes, spiders. Ugh. Star spawn of Cthulhu. Interesting design there, but still really cool creature to have. Which automatically makes me sort of like this book, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, so again, just some really cool stuff in there. So for $21.99, you know, 420-page book, uh, you can't go wrong with this one here. So, like I said, definitely recommend checking it out. And then we have the Creature Codex. Uh, so this one has a... It's not all. Like, there's a lot of new and unique creatures in here as well. But there's a lot of variations on established creatures already. Uh, so this one has... Uh, we'll just flip it over in the back here. Uh, so this one has some new... Again, new demons, new angels, uh, some different dragons, a couple different dragons and dinosaurs... Uh, also, elemental lords and animal lords to challenge powerful parties. Uh, and then new undead, including uh, some variant types of liches, which I'll get to. And uh, this one retails for $24.99. So it's a little bit more expensive, about $3 more. Uh, the, this, the pocket edition for the Tome of Beasts is, I think, a couple years uh, older than this one. So there's going to be a little bit of inflation. Uh, this also came out, like I said, post-pandemic. So that may affect some prices as well. Uh, but still, uh, this one here, uh, once I, like, I saw the cover, and uh, this is one that I cannot wait to, uh, to spend more time with. But like I said, we'll do a little flip through here. Uh, I'm not going to go through, like I said, every single creature in detail. Uh, there's, a lot, <laughs> there's a lot in here. Uh, but again, some cool stuff to look through. Some angels. Animal lord. So we have the mouse king. The Queen of Cats, Queen of Serpents, this one I, I think I would probably design adventures around. Again, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Oh, went a little bit too quickly there, but I'm going to sort of show you some of the things that are in here. 
Again, there's just, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot in this book, so I don't necessarily want to go through everything. I do love this child of uh, Yggdrasil, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, this guy's pretty cool because it's just this, it's sort of like a treant type creature, but again, you also have like these flowers that sort of bloom on it, um, or blossoms, whatever they are, but they actually look like eyes, and I just, I just love that art design to it. I don't know, it's just something I think was really, really cool, really well done. We got some devils, the wind devil's harp, the infernal knight. Then we got some damp fears, so they're sort of propping or popping up in a few different things these days. Uh, so these are sort of like half human, half vampire, or half humanoid, half vampire uh, type of uh, creatures. Uh, from like the Castlevania series, Alucard is a very famous example, I guess, of a damp fear. So here we have the, the Drock Tor. I just want to mention this one first. Uh, what's cool about the Drock Tor is this is actually something that's been in other D&D monster manuals going back to 3rd edition or 3.5. Um, I want to say they were also in 4th edition. Um, I don't recall seeing them in 5th edition stuff. I don't think they've been in any books yet. Uh, at least official ones from Wizards of the Coast. But I always kind of like these creatures. So it's awesome to have them here. And then we got some dragons, including the Clockwork Dragon. So if you want sort of a dragon-like construct. Uh, here we have the Light Dragon. Now what's cool about these ones in particular, uh, the Tome of Beasts had this for like one or two of them, but this book actually has artwork for the different age categories of the dragons that are in here. There's only a couple of dragon types in here, but it is still really cool to have the artwork for the different age categories. So this is the Wormling. So you see it's got the little tiny wings there and the, you know, the, um, I don't want to say oversized head, but uh, just, you know, the, the, the baby dragon look and aesthetic to it. And then we've got the young version here. So again, it looks a little bit more grown up. Then we have the adult version, which looks pretty cool as well. Kind of got that rainbow pattern there. But again, it is a light dragon, so you'd have like the light spectrum represented in it. And then we have the ancient version there. So again, that's really cool. And then we have the wasteland dragon. So again, we got the Wormling, the young version, the adult version. Again, these are all really cool designs. I actually really, I actually really, really like this dragon. This might be in my top five uh, fifth edition D&D dragons in terms of their aesthetic um, behind like the, the black dragon and the white dragon and the green dragon. I'd probably put, uh, I'd probably put this one either um, after that, after either those or after the red dragon, but I just love the way that this one looks. And then we have the ancient version here. Um, so again, just looks, you know, older, the larger, um, you know, plated um, scales. Uh, just really, really cool looking here. And then we have the Dragonborn. So there's a couple different types of Dragonborn in here as well. So like I said, it sort of has more uh, variations of existing creatures beyond just a lot of unique ones like the Toma Beast said. So again, quite a few different Dragonborn there. Um, some drakes. Uh, we had the Ale House Drake, so we also have a Bath House Drake, a Fey Drake, the Forest Drake, Moon Drake, uh, the Pack Drake. I actually like that one quite a bit as well. Then we got the the Paluda Drake, which looks like a weird porcupine dragon hybrid thing. The Drake, the skull, uh, the skull Drake actually looks really cool as well. So that's something I wouldn't mind having a mini of at some point. It would be really cool. Spider Drake, not a fan of those, but uh, that's my own personal arachnophobia thing going. Um, dust goblins, so there's again just all kinds of cool stuff in here. We got some elemental, uh, so we have an elemental storm lord, blood elemental, venom elemental or venom elemental, some elves. So like, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of variant creatures here. So like, so I'm gonna go. Oh, gotta show, gotta show the exploding toad. Um, yeah, there's some really cool stuff in here, but I want to get... The next thing I want to sort of uh, shift to... Actually, that guy's pretty awesome as well. Or girl, High Priestess. Some more gas, some more ghouls, giant moths, just giants. Chaos Spawn Goblin. Alchemical Golem. So yeah, lots of interesting stuff in here. Kappa. Those are from Japanese folklore. I believe this is also Japanese folklore. 
the Kobold Junk Shaman. And the Kurt. To the Turtle. Right, so here is the, the thing, the main thing that attracted me to this book. Uh, as you can also see on the front cover there, the, this book has some variant or two variant styles of the Lich. Uh, liches are some of my favorite creatures or favorite enemies to use, uh, like campaign ending enemies or villains. Uh, in d and I've had several campaigns where a Lich was the main antagonist. Uh, whether the players got that far or not, that was always the design. Uh, so, but the, the typical lich is an arcane spellcaster, like a, typically a wizard. Generally speaking, it's a wizard, but it could also be a sorcerer. And um, they go through this ritual. They create a phylactery, which houses their soul in the event that their body is destroyed. Uh, the phylactery re reconstructs the body after a period of time if the physical body is destroyed. Um, so the lich basically continues to come back unless the phylactery is found and destroyed, in which case the next time the physical body is destroyed, then that's it. But it's always been like an arcane uh, creature, uh, at least in like the 5th edition uh, monster books. So this one actually gives us, like I said, some variations here. So this is the Lich, the, the Hierophant Lich. Uh, so this is actually a divine spellcasting Lich. So this one here, instead of having like a wizard spell list, it has like a cleric spell list that I can draw off of. And there's some other uh, changes as well, including instead of having a paralyzing touch, uh, the... Herophant Lich has an Unholy Smite ability that it can use, so again, slightly, a slight different variation on the ability, so it's not just changing the spell list, there's actually a bit more that goes into it, which I think is really cool. So, you know, again, nice touch there. Uh, it has a legendary action called Damnation, which just sounds awesome. Um, so, yeah, again, it's really, really cool to have that. Uh, then it has some information on the Council of uh, Hierophants. And so, yeah, really cool stuff there. And then this one, like, I was expecting the, the, the divine version of the Lich. I wasn't expecting the Pact Lich, which is a, basically a warlock that um, goes through the same process. So this has warlock abilities instead of a wizard or cleric abilities. And instead of the paralyzing touch, they have a maddening touch as one of their special abilities. And yeah, just again, it's just so cool uh, to have the, these in here. And uh, again, something I would definitely use as a campaign villain. And it's just, you know, I mean, it, I guess it would have been easy enough for me to just simply, you know, make a lich with the spell casting of a cleric or warlock. Uh, but I honestly never really thought about it too, too much until I saw this. Uh, for me, the undead clerics type of character I always used was the Hukiva. Um, which was technically a failed attempt at turning into a Lich um, that left them able to cast spells, but very, very much insane. Um, but yeah, so really, really cool to have that in here. And then we just have some other, uh, again, some interesting creatures. We have some lycanthropes like the Werebat, the Werehyena. We have a Mandrake, a Mandriano. I don't know quite what that is. Um, so we have Mantic, Barbed King of Manticores. And the Barbed, which is, well, this one here is a Cleric, or a Cleric Gold. So yeah, again, some unique um, creatures to use in here. Megapede, the Lost Minotaur, the Moon Nymph. So again, just some, just a nice assortment of creatures to have in here. The Rageapede. Portal Master, Rat Folk Warlock, the Serpent Folk of Yig, the Servant of Yig, the Shadow River Lord, that guy's pretty cool looking as well, Shantank, the Soth. Froth, Oth, <laughs> cool stuff. Skeleton Monarch, I actually like that one quite a bit as well. Shadow Skeleton looks cool. Skull Lantern, Giant Sloth, Spawn of Chernabog, uh, Sh Terror Bird, Desert Troll, Unhatched. So you have like an undead, um, undead like hatchling dragon. 
which is kind of neat. So if the, the player characters, for example, this would actually be kind of cool if, again, if they were having, going up against like a Lich or a Necromancer, and early in the campaign they find these dragon eggs and, and break them, you could have, you know, the, the, the Necromancer or whoever bring back, you know, the, uh, the unborn dragon fetus or whatever you want to call it as the skeletal undead. I think that'd be kind of a, just, a, again, a cool way of showing how the player's actions might come back to bite them. Uh, we got a vampire here, so we have the Patrician, or Patrician, Vampire, Vampire Priestess, Vampire Knight, or Vampiric Knight, and then Venom Ma Hydra, the Wind Weasel, the Albino Death Weasel, that thing looks kind of terrifying, the Wendigo, Whisper in the Dark, or Whisperer in Darkness, uh, Mask of Narlhotep, so yeah, or Narlethotep, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, so again, some Lovecraft-inspired stuff in here. We have the Wicker Man. Um, no bee companions, though. Done to whatever that's supposed to be. The Wyvern Knight. And then the War Wyvern, so again, some cool stuff there. The Yagagu. Zombie Lord, so again, kind of a cool thing to have there. The mold zombies, and the Zug, and then there's some uh, NPCs in this one. So there's a battle mage, uh, which I kind of wish I had this for an earlier game <laughs> uh, that I was running. Uh, Blood mage, Doom speaker, Dwarf cleric of the brew, <laughs> Dwarf uh, grave slayer, Gear mage, Gnomish knife cultist. Necromancer. Again, I kind of wish that I had this before. It also falls in the challenge rating uh, area of what I was doing. Void Racked Mage. This is actually a really cool looking creature there as well. And this is also designed to be used with the Midgard campaign setting. So there are going to be some uh, you know, situations where it has a little sidebar um, for how you can use these in the campaign setting if you decide if you have that. Uh, but again, they're fully usable in regular. 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So there we go. So that was the Creature Codex and the Tome of Beasts from Cobalt Publishing, especially like so the, particularly the, the Pocket Editions. So I've talked about Pocket Editions before. I've done some videos for them before, uh, for Pathfinder and for uh, Starfinder. Uh, but I've always said that I would love to see Wizards of the Coast put some out for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, back in the day... The D&D Essentials uh, rule set for 4th edition was done with like these sort of pocket style books uh, in mind. But uh, for 5th edition, they haven't done anything along those lines. And I really think it's sort of a missed opportunity for them. Um, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are really into collecting pocket edition books. And there's a few different reasons why I think it would be beneficial for a company like Wizards of the Coast to consider it. Even if they don't necessarily do it themselves, but lease the rights out to a third party... Uh, perhaps to publish it for them or to put it together and do it to do the work for them and then put it out like even Cobalt Press, for example, uh, could be a great company to do that through. Uh, but there's a few reasons why I think it would be a handy thing to do or to have. Uh, the first thing is that it tends to breathe new life into older products whose sales have sort of tanked or dropped off or the books may even be out of print in terms of the hardcovers or if they're not technically out of print. They're basically out of print and very difficult to find. Uh, so these are a, an alternative to that. Um, so for example, I was always interested in getting the Creature Codex or and the Tome of Beasts actually, but I never did just because the, uh, the price was a bit high. And by the time I had the funds um, reliably to be able to pick them up, uh, the hardcovers were just really nowhere to be found. So I just sort of, you know, decided that, you know, I missed my opportunity and didn't think too much of it until I saw these pocket editions and I grabbed them basically both immediately. Uh, this one here I purchased myself uh, back before the start of the pandemic. Uh, the Creature Codex, uh, my, my wife actually picked this up for me when we went to visit a local game store uh, that I hadn't been to since the pandemic started. Um, so, but yeah, soon like I, I, I saw this at the bookstore and I picked this up immediately and um, she knew, noticed that I was interested in looking at this one and um, offered to pick it up for me. So I wasn't going to say no to that. 
Uh, so that's one thing that they can do. Another thing uh, that sort of goes along those lines is, uh, I think, a, a bit of a twist on it for Wizards of the Coast could be to re-release variant versions of their hardcover books in the pocket edition format. Uh, specifically like the core rule books, they originally came out with the core rule book gift set um, a couple of years ago, but that was all three hardcovers and a DM screen in a box or in a slipcase set that you had to buy all those together. And it was it was it was expensive. It was an expensive product, um, which for me was a no go. Um, I have a very strict limit of one hundred dollars um, taxes included for the most part. Um, and I've never actually gone above that, so I'm not going to start now. But if they re-released the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual with those variant covers, albeit in pocket edition format, it would give some of the, us who missed the original opportunity or were only interested in maybe one of the books um, to be able to get them. And for the price of pocket edition books... Um, you're more likely to sell all three um, to people, even if they're not necessarily would have bought them all if they had been put out for hardcovers. You know, spending $25 to $30 for a book is better than spending here in Canada, at least. Um, well, I guess I should say those are sort of the price that I'm looking at here. In Canada, you're looking at, you know, $60 to $70 or more for some of these books. So, you know, to have it as a, you know, something that's a half or sometimes even a third of the price is a much more attractive option. And it's something that they definitely could do because uh, Wizards of the Coast had sent me this spiral bound notebook um, for the, with the Rhyme of the Frostmaiden book. Um, so, you know, it does show that they could just, you know, make the covers smaller and just print them for a soft covered version. Uh, without it wouldn't have like the shine to it that the hardcover books have, but that's fine. You still get at least the artwork, and like they wouldn't be spiral bound, obviously. But this is just to sort of show that you know give you an idea of what a pocket edition cover might look like if they used the alternative art, which I think again would be a cool way to do that. Um, and again, it would also help maybe boost sales of things that um, may have sort of dropped off over the years like the Prince of the Apocalypse um, adventure or Storm King's Thunder, um, you know, things along those lines. So again, one might, might breathe new life into those. Um, and the other thing is that um, there are people out there that just prefer getting the smaller softcover books to use when they go to play or run games. Uh, so I think it would be really great. To, you know, I would rather to carry something like this in my backpack than the hardcover, which would be, you know, take up twice as much space and, you know, be just heavier overall with the, the larger page size, you know, the thicker covers and everything. And so I'd be able to take more stuff with me uh, when I go to run games uh, that I would be able to do with the hardcover. So again, I just think it's, uh, you know, something that I would love to see Wizards of the Coast entertain at the very least. Uh, like I said, even if they, you know, push the publishing, like let Cobalt Press do the publishing for it, um, sort of like a contract thing. I mean, I don't know. Cobalt Press did the, um, I believe they were the ones that did the original adventure um, campaign for 5th edition back with the Tyranny of Dragon storyline. So it's obvious that there is, or at least there was, a working relationship. So I think it's something you'd be able to do relatively easy. Uh, but again, I just, I love these these pocket edition books. Um, they're cheaper. Uh, they take up less space, and it's just, again, it's just kind of cool to have. <clears throat> so I'm looking forward to getting more Pocket Edition books in the future, and I would love to see Pocket Edition books coming out uh, for the 5th Edition core books, adventures, supplements, campaign settings, whatever. Um, I would just love to see some of those come out, again, to breathe new life into them. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below if you have either of these books, be it the hardcover or Pocket Edition. And uh, what are some of your favorite creatures from the books? And what are some of the creatures that you take from these books to use in your encounters? I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. I look forward to your feedback. And I will see you all next time. Take care.